Hey guys, and welcome to another episode. Today in this video, I'm gonna show you how to black out your headlights just like the headlights behind me. Now, I've already done one of the headlights on the Golf and I'm gonna show you how to replicate this exact same look onto the passenger side. So I already went ahead, opened up the headlights and repainted the inside housing. Instead of it being chrome, I painted it matte black. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that today. So if we take a look at the original housing right here, we can see that the entire thing is all chrome. Now we're gonna be going ahead, disassembling this entire thing, removing that inside piece, and we're also gonna be repainting this, 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 and this. All the chrome, except for inside the actual reflector bowls of the headlight, are gonna be repainted matte black. So to get started with blacking out the inside of the headlight, we need to remove the headlight from the car. So in order to do that, we first need to remove the grill from the car, and it's attached by a little spring clip that holds the hood release at the top of the grill. Once you remove that, you'll be able to simply pull out and lift up on the grill to take it out. You then will have five T30 Torx bolts that are securing the front bumper onto the car. Once you remove those, you can then go into the wheel well and then remove the four final screws that are holding the bumper up into the wheel well. You then need to remove any kind of electrical harness or wiring that goes to the bumper. So if you have lights up there, parking sensors, or anything else, you need to remove those now. For the Golf, the only wires that I have are for the turn signals down in the bumper and to remove them you simply push forward on the front of the reflector and then push the reflector forward. Now you just need to remove the light that's attached to the back of the reflector so that we can remove the bumper. All you have to do to do that is push in and turn and the light and harness should just come right out. You then should be able to remove the bumper completely from the car. Once the bumper is set aside and out of the way, you need to remove the four Torx bolts that are holding the headlight assembly onto the car. Now you're going to have two of them at the top and two of them at the bottom. Once you have those removed, you can then go behind the headlight and remove the electrical connector that goes to the headlight housing that gives power to all of the bulbs in the headlight. With those four bolts and the electrical harness on the back side of the headlight removed, you then should be able to remove the headlight from the car. All right, so we've got our headlight housing right here and we need to remove the lens from the headlight so that we can repaint the inside of it. And in order to do that, we need to remove these clips that are found on the outside of it that are basically clamping and holding it down together. There's gonna to be a couple of them surrounding the headlight. On this one, there's four. So once you remove this, 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 and this, we then need to break the seal in between the lens and the plastic housing on the back right here. So you can undo these clips any way you want. You can use a flathead screwdriver, you can use a set of needle nose pliers, it doesn't really matter what you use, you just need to remove them from here. So pry up a little bit and the thing will come right off. Now we're gonna have to reuse these things, so be careful and put them in a safe place so we can use them afterwards. So with those removed, we still can't pull apart the lens from the housing. The reason being is because there's a little bit of glue that's in between these two pieces that are holding it together. Now if that glue wasn't there, those clips will be the only thing holding it together. We should be able to just pull it and pry it apart, but because we can't, we need to warm up this glue. And there's two different ways that you can take care of this. So option one is gonna be taking the headlight and putting it inside of an oven. You're gonna put it at 250 degrees at bake, for about eight to 10 minutes, and that right there should be enough for the glue to loosen up that you can pry the headlight and the housing apart. Now, if you guys live at home or say your parents are gonna kill you, don't do that option. And I didn't do that option only because I'm gonna show you option two, and that is gonna be making your own oven. And the way that you do that is you need a box, and it needs to be a pretty sizable box to put the housing and extra space around it. And I'm gonna show you exactly what I built up. So what I have here is a box. Pretty straightforward, there's nothing in it as of contents other than a couple pieces of wood that I put down there. Now, other than the box itself, I made a little exhaust port at the top right here that'll let some of the hot air escape out of the box. And then following that down, I made a little hole. And the hole at the bottom is there so I could get my heat gun, stick it inside of there, and warm up the air inside the box. So the way this works is we're gonna have to put our headlight inside this box. And I'm going to be putting it up on a couple pieces of wood. Put it over here and we need to heat up, as I said, the seal that's around the entire clear part of the headlight housing. Now I'm going to set it up kind of like this. So it's not touching the cardboard, but it's not close enough to the heat gun where the heat from the heat gun is going to burn the plastic. 
So this right here is a pretty safe distance. And then at this point, you're gonna just close up the box like that. You're gonna tape it down to make sure that it's closed. Now it doesn't need to be airtight, but the more airtight it is, the, the better the box is gonna keep heat in there. So after eight to 10 minutes has gone by with the heat gun on, you're then gonna take the headlight out of the box and you're gonna try to pry the headlight lens away from the housing. Now you wanna be careful when you're doing this and you wanna try and apply a little bit of pressure at the same time. So try and pry a little bit from one side and then switch to the opposite side so that the lens is pushing out equally from all ends. Now with that being said, you should be able to pull the lens apart from the headlight safely. If it doesn't wanna come out, just put the headlight back into the box and keep it there for another five minutes. You should eventually be able to pull the headlight lens away from the housing. Now with that done, you're going to be able to take apart the rest of the headlight and you're going to be able to paint up any chrome pieces that you'd like. So with the lens removed, we should just be able to pull this gently off and this little shroud on the outside part right here should just come right out, just like that. So we've got that removed and we've got the rest of our headlight. Now at this point, we need to come from the inside, or actually from the outside, disconnect all the headlights, remove all the bulbs, and we need to take all of this out because we need to get this ready for painting. So it doesn't really matter where you start, it's just somewhere on the back. So I'm first gonna disconnect this part here, and this is the wiring harness that connects to the actual wiring into the car. And we've got all of the wiring for the bulbs inside of there. Now on top of that, we've got this, where we need to push this up and over, bring that back, and it should relieve this little casing. And that will expose all the wiring that we've got behind the headlight. So with that being said, we should be able to just disconnect and pull out all these connectors and get our headlight ready for painting. So remove all of these bulbs and all the wiring from the headlight and set it aside. So before you do anything, grab a rag, put a little bit of water on it, and then wipe down any dirt that you have, only to see what condition we've got our headlight in. So if it's very dirty, if it's very bad, we need to repaint the whole thing. We might need to repaint only a couple parts of it. Because if you can, don't touch the inside part of the reflector bowls because these things have a very light coating of this like chrome plastic plating thing on it. So if you can, don't touch it at all because it might wear off. Now with that being said, any parts that aren't staying that color, you can touch clean sand and get it ready to paint. So I'm first gonna clean all this up with a rag with water on it. And then I'm gonna follow it up with 400 grit sandpaper so that all of this has a rough finish so that our primer and paint will be able to stick to it. So say let's start off with this piece right here. So once you've cleaned it up, then grab a piece of 400 grit sandpaper and scratch and agitate all of the surface that you're gonna be painting. So if you're gonna repaint all of this interior piece and the top, you need to make sure that you sand it and scuff it all so that when we get our paint and we spray it on here, it'll adhere properly and you're gonna have a long lasting, good looking headlight. So with this piece here, you wanna go over it and do a once over to make sure that there's nothing really shiny left on here. All the pieces, all the surface area should all be matte. And that's gonna make sure that the paint is gonna to wanna to stick to this plastic. Now next up is gonna be the actual headlight housing right here. Now for our headlight, because we are not doing a retrofit where we're gonna put an aftermarket projector inside this side of the reflector housing, we need to mask this area up and only sand down the chrome exterior pieces around here. We also wanna mask up this area here for a parking light and this part right here for our daytime running light. To give you an idea as to why you would want to mask that little area up is because when that bulb on the inside of the reflector bulb turns on, you want all the light on the back side to reflect outwards and basically project light on, onto the road. Now if you have a projector bulb like this, that's got like the little lens on it and it splatters the light out, you can paint up almost the entire surrounding area of it because the only part that actually projects the light is the glass bulb, the little lens on the inside. So you have your projector housing and you have a reflector housing. If you have a reflector housing, do not paint that little area on the inside if you wanna make sure that you get good light output. So once you have your headlight housing taken apart and you're ready to paint it all up, if you have a set of projectors, so if you're gonna be doing a headlight retrofit, now will be the perfect time to install them in the housing. Otherwise, just continue on and paint the housing and the inside of here like we were planning on. 
I'll be making a video down the road on installing projectors on a reflector housing like this, but in the meantime, I'm gonna be sticking to just repainting the inside of it. So if we have our headlight right here, you wanna mask up this bowl, this little light, the lens right here, the inside of this bowl, and the outside perimeter of the headlight. And the reason being is that all of this in here, that's your adhesive that holds the housing and the lens on here. So if you get any dirt or paint inside of there, this might not want to stick as nicely down the road. Now I'll get more into that afterwards, but in the meantime, just mask this area up with the roll of masking tape and call it a day. So with the outside perimeter masked up, we can then go ahead and start masking up the light and the two bowls. So I'm going to start off by first masking up the light right here. I'm going to get the tape and put it on the inside of the light like that and make sure that it covers all the way up to the outside. I'm going to put my nail in there and try to get the tape as far down as I can because afterwards I'm going to get a knife and cut off any excess tape. Do it like this. Like If you can take apart your entire headlight housing and remove the chrome section from the headlight, it's going to be very easy to do this. But unfortunately for my car, it's actually quite difficult to get the screws on the back side, so I'm going to have to do it like this. So with that masked up, you can then grab a little knife and cut off any excess tape on the outside. Then you can simply just remove the excess tape and then push around the tape on the outside perimeter to cover up the entire headlight. For the bowls, I'm going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to get a piece of tape, put it on the outside like this, and then I'm just going to cut off any excess once I do the entire thing. And the reason why I'm not putting tape on the inside part of the reflector bowl is because I told you before that the reflector bowl inside of here, there's a little bit of chrome on the inside and if it's not very well applied to the headlight, when you put tape on it and peel it off, it might peel back the chrome. This is not really a wear item in the manufacturer's eyes, so they're never going to expect you to take apart the headlight and play around with it. So there's a very thin coating on here. That's why if you play it safe, you're going to be ahead. And then with your knife, slowly and carefully go around the entire shroud and cut off any tape that we don't need. So there's no rush here, just take your time and make a nice precise line around the entire headlight. And if it's done properly, you're gonna get a very nice cutoff. So you're not gonna have any lines or staggers on the paint. So repeat this exact same thing for this reflector bowl as well. Now make sure that when you do that, you still have the back side of this covered up. So make sure that when you go to the painting step to put the bulb back in here, make sure that this is completely sealed and lock this up because otherwise you might get overspray coming around the front side of here, down into the sides and then into the reflector housing. So make sure that you put the bulb back in there, lock that up and make sure that it's completely airtight. So with the headlight now masked up, it's now time to sand down all of this little chrome that we still have exposed. So we've got our lights all masked up and ready to go. So we just need to prep all this so we can get ready for the painting step. So take your time with the sandpaper and scuff up all of the chrome with the 400 grit. Now you want to make sure that instead of it being shiny, it looks matte and that's going to be the foundation for our primer. Once it's all scuffed up, grab a towel with some isopropyl alcohol and remove any dust that we've made during the sanding process. Now if there's any intricate areas that you want to wipe down but you can't quite reach with the rag, grab a Q-tip with some IPA on it and wipe down any intricate areas. So next up is going to be painting. So now that we have both of these panels both ready to spray, you're going to want to grab a plastic primer and you're going to want to spray down all the chrome and all the plastic with this. Now you want to make sure that you use a primer that bonds to plastic and that's very important when you're doing this kind of work. So get your can, give it a shake and spray down all of the headlight. So for your first coat of the primer, you want to dust on a nice little coating of paint onto the headlight housing. Now you don't want to go too heavy, you just want a nice small thin layer of primer on the headlight and this is going to be the foundation for all of the rest of the layers of paint. You're not looking for a wet coat on your first application, that's what the second coat is going to be for. So for the first round, you just want to get a nice dusting layer on the entire shroud and housing. 
you're gonna let that sit for a good 10-15 minutes, come back, and then we're gonna inspect our headlight to see what we need to do for the second coat. After you let the first coat dry, you're then gonna to wanna to move this and rotate this to a different angle so that you can hit some spots that you weren't able to hit from the first time. So say move it this way, then this way, and then upside down if you can, because if you can see here, there's still spots that aren't covered with paint. So just angle it around and make sure you get the entire shroud and the entire cover right here all covered in paint. So when you're applying your second coat, you're just gonna slow down your tracking speed of the paint. This way, you'll put a little bit more paint on the housing as opposed to the thin layers that we were doing before. Again, you're gonna try and hit the angles that you weren't able to get the first time so that we have the entire thing covered in our gray primer. So now that we've got the headlight housing and the surround piece right here, both covered in primer and ready to go, it's now time to put down our coats of black paint onto the headlight. So the color that we're gonna be painting our headlights is a flat black. And make sure that the plastic paint that you use is made. Make sure that the paint that you use is specifically made for plastics. This is very important so that all the paint works and lasts for a long time. Now it's very difficult to find a paint like this that is UV resistant, and that's why once we put this down, we're gonna need to follow it up with a UV protected clear coat. But in the meantime, we're gonna spray down our paint onto the headlight. So for these next layers of paint, you wanna do a very same approach that we did for the primer. So the first one is gonna be fairly light, and then the second one is gonna be a little bit thicker. That's gonna make sure that our paint is gonna hold on and bite onto the primer, and we're not gonna have any runs. The same thing goes for the actual headlight. You're gonna to wanna to try and get some of the areas that are difficult to get for the first coat, and then for the second coat, you're gonna try and build up the layers of paint. For the second pass around, you're going to want to move the shroud a little bit just so that you can get some different angles. Go ahead and apply your second coat of black paint and then you're going to see if you have everything covered. If you do, you should be able to leave this the way it is, otherwise follow it up with a third and final coat. And again, the same thing applies to the actual headlight assembly. You're going to see if there's any areas you missed. If there are some, go ahead and spray them down, otherwise this second coat should be all that you need. It's now time to apply the clear coat onto both the headlight surround and the headlight assembly itself. Now you can see right here we've got a Rust-Oleum clear coat and this is a semi-gloss clear. Make sure that this also is a paint that bonds to plastic. Now it's very important that you get a fast drying, non-yellowing, and crucially a UV resistant clear coat because this is gonna be basically sitting outside in the sun and this is gonna be beating on with UV rays and if the paint isn't capable for it, it's gonna deteriorate and it'll look terrible in a matter of no time. Now this is a very similar clear coat that we used on the headlights when I restored them on the Dodge Charger from a while ago. However, this is a semi-gloss clear as opposed to a fully gloss clear. So with your UV resistant clear coat, you're gonna spray down a first thin layer on the headlight surround, and then you're gonna do the exact same thing to the actual headlight assembly. Once you do that and you let that dry for a good 10, 15 minutes, you're gonna come back and you're gonna spray a wet coat onto the surround and the headlight assembly as well. Now it's gonna go on wet, but it's completely normal. That's because there's paint thinners inside the paint. When it dries, it's gonna get rid of that glossiness and it's gonna make it somewhat satin. Wait another 15 minutes and then start removing all the masking on the headlight. Now you're going to have the masking around the outside that covers the glue and the rest of the tape that's covering both of the reflector bowls and the light in the middle. So now that we have the headlight housing, the surround piece and the lens all separated and ready to be put back together, before we put it back together we need to make sure that there's no more dirt in any of these three parts. So this is all painted up, this is good, so is this one. But because we took this lens off, we need to remove any dirt or fingerprints that were made on the back side of here before we put it all back together. Because if we put it on now without cleaning the back side of it, we might have fingerprints inside the headlight that we won't be able to clean. So it's very important to clean this up before putting it back together. I'm gonna be using some Meguiar's Express spray wax and a microfiber towel to just clean up any fingerprints on the lens. Now, you only need to do this for the inside part of the lens. If you have any fingerprints on the outside, you can clean those up afterwards. So just take your time and clean this up properly and do a very good job at cleaning up all this dirt. Now, any streaks, any fingerprints, as I said, you will not be able to remove once we put this back together. So take the time to clean this up and make this perfect. So we now need to reinsert the little surround inside the headlight 
because we need to put this all back together. So that goes in first and make sure that that clips in. Now once that's installed like that, we need to make sure that the bead around the outside of the headlight is in good condition in order to make sure that we don't get any condensation buildup on the inside of the headlight. So in order to do that, I've got a roll of rubber butyl. I'll have a link for it in the description and you guys will be able to buy some. So you just grab a little bit of this stuff, pick any starting spot you want, and you're basically just gonna be laying down a new bead inside the seal. So right in the middle between here, around the entire headlight, we need to put some of this stuff in there. So you're gonna apply some along the entire outside perimeter of the headlight housing so that when you put the lens back onto the housing, we're gonna have a nice airtight seal between the two pieces. Otherwise, if you don't do this, you might get condensation buildup down the road. So play it safe when you're doing this project, buy some of this stuff, it's not too expensive, and just get the entire thing done and over with. When you bring it back all the way to the beginning, if you have any excess, just cut it with a pair of scissors and call it a day. Then do one final once over of the lens and the headlight. Make sure that there's no dust or no anything. And then once you're clear, grab the lens, put it over the headlight, and align up the ceiling part around the sides. So try and align it so that the entire headlight will be able to just push in back together with a little bit of heat and a little bit of pressure. So it shouldn't go all the way in yet. That's why we need to put this back into the box with the heater so we can warm up the rubber and then push it and clamp it back together. So to seal it for good, you're gonna to wanna to get your headlight housing, put the entire thing inside the box and turn on your heat gun. You're gonna let it sit in there for a good five to 10 minutes just so that everything warms up. And then open up the box, take the headlight out and then start squeezing everything back together. Now if you have a set of pliers to help you squeeze it back together, it's going to help you greatly because you're going to need to put those little tiny clips around the outside of the headlight back on. Now if you guys remember there were four of them and you have to snap each one of them on so that the headlight stays sealed. Now once that's in, you want to put that back in the box, put the heat gun back in it for five minutes and then go over it again so it would allow a little bit of heat inside the rubber butyl and it's going to warm it up and make sure this headlight is perfectly sealed and you're not going to have any condensation. Now at this stage, we're basically home free. We've got the entire headlight baked together, all fixed up and painted. Now it's just a matter of putting the wiring harness and the bulbs back into the headlight and then mounting it back on the car. Now when you have your headlights out, if you want to go the route of changing the bulbs instead of halogens to LEDs, you can by all means do that and this is a great time to do it with the headlight out of the car. And that's exactly what I'm going to be doing right now. So with the headlights out, I'm going to be replacing both the halogen bulbs, so the one for the low beam and the one for the high beams, I'm going to be replacing those with brand new ones, and then all the other bulbs I'm changing over to LEDs. So before I install the wiring harness back into the headlight, I'm going to change over the bulbs. So I'm going to be removing the old ones, setting them aside, and I'm going to be replacing them with new ones. So I've got a new low beam bulb right there, and I'm going to be replacing the high beam one here as well to a new one. I've got them in here, I just need to open up this package. I'm also going to be changing over the signal bulb that goes in there to a new one right here. So the old one looks like this, and the new one is going to be an LED. Last but not least, I'm going to be changing over the parking lights to new LEDs, just like that right there, as opposed to, where is it, to the little incandescent bulb right there. Now when you guys are installing your LEDs in your car, if they don't work for some certain reason in the way that you put it in, take them and flip them 180 degrees and then when you reinsert them, they should work. So if you get in that circumstance, just flip the LED around and you guys are gonna be in the clear. So after that's installed, we've got our other LED right there. And now we just need to mount the wiring harness and feed it through the headlight housing and then we're gonna be basically done. So get your headlight mounted in and then screw in those four bolts that secure the headlight onto the car. Then inside the hood, attach the wiring harness to the back side of the headlight so all the lights work. Grab your bumper and then mount it up to the car. Now before you actually secure it in, make sure you install all the wiring harnesses and everything that lead up to the bumper. So for my car, I told you before, there's only the little connector on the side for the little indicator. So we're gonna have to install that and put it back in. 
When you're mounting up the bumper up to the side of the car, you're gonna need to feed the light for the turn signal down here, and you need to feed it through this little spot. Now I also replaced those bulbs with LEDs while I was at it, and instead of installing the amber reflectors back into the bumper, I went ahead and bought myself a set of clear ones. I bought one for both the driver and passenger side of the car, so it's very simple. You just get the LED and the wiring harness, feed it up through the inside of there until it clicks in, and you push forward on the front part first, getting that into place, and then the back end should just be able to push right in, and you're done. Repeat the same thing for the driver side, so fish the light inside there, and then get your new reflector, install it until it snaps into place, feed the forward part first in, like that, and then the back part should just slide right in. Then go ahead and follow up and tighten up each one of those four screws up into the back side of the front wheel well to secure the bumper in place. Last but not least, install each one of these screws that secure the bumper onto the car. And you're gonna have one down there on the bottom of the front bumper. You're gonna have another one up there at the top. A second, uh, actually that's a lie, that's a third one there. Fourth, fifth, sixth, and finally seventh down there. So we then need to install the grill back onto the car. So you just need to snap the top part of the little hood latch in, and then you slide the bottom part of the grill in first. And there's gonna be three little hooks that go in. There's gonna be one here, one here, and one here. Once you push that down into place, there's gonna be two more things that need to be aligned at the top of the grill. And you just push those into place. One. And two. After everything is all said and done, we've got our blacked out headlight housing behind us, we've got our new LEDs installed on the car, and we've also got our new clear side markers. Now I'll be putting a little bit more information inside the description box of this video. If you guys have any questions, make sure you check the description box first, and then if that still doesn't answer your questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. All right guys, so I'm gonna be hitting 50,000 subscribers sometime soon, so I'm gonna be doing a giveaway, as you guys might have known if you guys are a previous subscriber. So I'll be doing a giveaway sometime soon, but I've got no idea what I should do for it. If you guys have any ideas, throw it down in the comment section below, and I'm completely open. If you guys have any sweet suggestions for the giveaway type or how to do the giveaway, let me know, I'm all ears. Thanks for watching guys. The next video is gonna be about this guy, so stay tuned.